pleasure to be before you once again on this beautiful Lord's Day. I don't know if many of you realize something about me, but I was once trapped in a woman's body. And with much labor and even surgery, I was born by a woman. It's been a little bit over a year ago where the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee committee held hearings for Judge Kentaji Brown Jackson. She was a Supreme Court nominee. Well, if you kept up with that, part of that involved questions. This accomplished judge attended Harvard University. She even served as an editor on the Harvard Law Review. Yet during these hearings, Judge Jackson was presented with a very simple question. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? And you know what? To this day, we're still waiting on a coherent response from her. There are many people who cannot seem to answer this question. And I don't think They don't know the answer. I think they're being dishonest, and I think you can see that by their actions, by the doctrine that is being pushed throughout not just our country, but throughout the entire world. Apparently to some, if they sing the tune from Shania Twain, I feel like a woman, they must be a woman. That's kind of, kind of a catchy song. But because I sing it now, look at me, I'm a woman. However, then on Monday morning, maybe I decide to sing a song from Books and Done. I'm a hardworking man. However, typically you'll see the direct opposite of that. When things get tough, I feel like a woman because it's an easy escape. Do my feelings change reality? If I feel like a woman, am I a woman? Do my feelings alter reality? You see, my feelings can change. In fact, they do change. Even though this is true, feelings can never change one's gender. Thus, it is impossible to change one's gender. Therefore, it is impossible to be a transgender person. Instead, what you have are a whole host of folks that are confused. Now, many studies have shown they are not being broadcasted, but the children that are falling victim to this mental disease, this confusion, typically have autism. Oftentimes, these people are victims of various forms of abuse. They're also victims of peer pressure. The opinions of social media influencers running rampant, and they're quite forceful. The more and more time our youth spend on their phones and other electronic devices, the more time that they're possibly being affected by such people. Worse yet, most of these people are falling victim to older folks who are not behaving as adults. Folks that should be protecting these children 
these most vulnerable in our society are neglecting and abusing these children. In each instance, just as Judge Jackson exhibited, Romans chapter 1 verse 22 applies. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now we're going to do something that this judge cannot or will not do, as, long, as well as a whole myriad of people who refuse to do. We're going to answer, what is a woman? If you're going to start answering this sort of thing, we need to go back to the beginning. We've had sermon recently dealing with patterns. There was a pattern set forth in creation by God Almighty himself. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 27, it says, And God said, Let us make mankind in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every other creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Man and woman created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every creeping thing that, or every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God's design for mankind is man and woman. Male and female. There are no in-betweens. This was true in the beginning. It is true today. And it will be true throughout the rest of our time here on this earth. We see that woman was designed to be different. There are different biological traits that she, has, she possesses. She possesses two X chromosomes. Typically, women are shorter and way less when compared to men. A little less bone density, a little less muscle, muscle mass. Typically have smaller lungs. Even the larynx develops a little differently. And this lends itself to a typically higher pitched voice. Women typically have softer and drier skin. They even have less sweat glands than men. They produce higher levels of the hormone estrogen. And women possess heightened senses of hearing and smell. Woman was designed with the capability to carry a child. Woman is in possession of the organs needed to conceive. She is capable of becoming pregnant. She is capable of sustaining the life of that unborn baby. Her pelvis is even wider than a male's. Why is this? You look that up and they say it's because it's designed for childbirth. Wow. That's what God says. She is even fitted with the capability to sustain the child's life after birth. Now, a woman may undergo a hysterectomy or even a mastectomy. However, biologically, genetically, hormonally, and chromosomally, she remains every bit of a woman. Biblical womanhood is different from biblical manhood. This would naturally follow. Jesus makes the statement in Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 through 6. says, He answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, 
and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Who is he that made them male and female? It was the eternal word, Jesus himself. He would know. He was there. And he makes that statement here in the New Testament recorded in his last will and testament. By these statements, Jesus points out that there are but two genders. There are different roles associated with each gender. Men and women are not equal. They are complementary. Men and women are not the same. They fulfill the needs of the opposite. Thus, a man ought not to behave as a woman. He can never be a woman. He can never process information as a woman. His entire being is male. The same is true for women attempting to behave as men. Secondly, what is woman to both God and man? We see from our, our first passage, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, that woman was also designed to be an image bearer. Verse 26, let us make mankind in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. In verse 27, God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God created he him, man and woman, created he them. This quality is extended not only to the human male, but the human female is an image bearer. She too bears the image of God. Henry Morris elaborates on this subject. He says, God is, as it were, taking counsel here with himself, not with angels, since man was to be made in the image of God and not of angels. Our image, therefore, implies human likeness to the triune Godhead. Plants possess a body, and animals possess a body and consciousness. Man was not only to have a body created from the earth and a consciousness of the created soul, but man was also to possess a third created entity, the image of God, an eternal spirit capable of communion and fellowship with his creator. Note that man here, and is often used in scripture, is used in a generic sense to include both man and woman. Both male and female were created in God's image. Thus both possess equally an eternal spirit capable of personal fellowship with their God. Shared equally by women and men are all those spiritual attributes not shared by the animals. Moral conscience, abstract thought, appreciation for beauty, emotional feelings, and especially the capacity for worshiping and loving God. Now those are taken from the Henry Morris Study Bible, pages 12 and 13. We must note that this quality is not dependent upon marriage. A male bears God's image at conception, not by becoming a husband. The pattern is true for female. She bears God's image at conception, not by becoming a wife. Are the following individuals image bearers? Jesus of Nazareth, Martha, Mary, Lazarus of Bethany. And what about Paul? If marriage were a requirement to fully bear the image of God, why then did God write 1 Corinthians chapter 7? Woman was designed to be a help meet for man. We typically look at this phrase and say, well, God designed her to be a, super, a suitable helper. 
That's true. But that's not where it ends. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. It says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Now, she was made to be a sufficient aid for man. But what does this word help mean? The Hebrew word here employed is azer. The ISBE has this to say about azer. In the story of Eden, Eve is spoken of as a help meet for Adam. The idea in meat is not so much suitability, though that is implied, but it's more a likeness or correspondence in nature. One like himself as taken from him. The woman would be an aid and a companion of the man in his tasks. And Nelson's Old Testament word studies has this to say. Azer is to help, aid, assist as one succors the miserable and destitute, as allies assist in war. Thus, woman was created with the capability to assist. She was designed with the capability of an ally in war. God's woman is a warrior. In the Old Testament, God is labeled as the helper of his people. He is their shield, their sword, and their deliverer. God is being portrayed as better than horses and chariots of all the heathen nations. God guards his people. He overthrows the people's enemy, that is Israel. This is the kind of help, Azer, that woman was designed to provide. This is the type of help she is, excuse me, she is capable of. It is not only the man who is called upon to wear God's armor. The brotherhood, consisting of men and women, must do this. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Put on the whole armor of God. Is that just to the men? That's to all Christians. Why? Because Christians are engaged in spiritual warfare. We all must be properly prepared. This also includes women. Woman was designed to glorify God. We know from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, that man and woman must obey God, for this is the whole duty of mankind. Woman is offered the same saving gospel of Christ. She is called upon to hear God's word, Romans 10, 17. She is called upon to believe in Jesus as the Son of God, John chapter 8, 24. She is called on to repent of her past sins, Luke chapter 13, verse 3. She is called upon to confess Christ before others. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. She is also called upon to be baptized for the remission of her sins. Acts chapter 22, verse 16. She is called upon to be a living sacrifice to God. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We all glorify God by obeying His commands. God gives us a picture of his virtuous woman. In Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. It's a lengthy reading, but I would like to read it at this time. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. 
She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands to holding the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow. For her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. For her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates." Sure, there are others, but this is a list that I could come up with of words that would describe God's woman. She is priceless, dependable, prepared, knowledgeable, strong, kind, generous, wise, and capable. God's woman is a force to be reckoned with. Now third, what is a woman not? Well, she is not created inferior to man. She was made to be different from all of creation. Genesis chapter 2, verses 19 through 24 says, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living thing, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found any help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took out one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. I am persuaded that God intentionally waited to create woman. You see, Adam was tasked with naming the created animals, yet there was none that could uh, sufficiently assist him in this task. So then God made Eve from Adam's side. And it drew his response, as we just read in verses 23 and 24. Adam would be more apt to appreciate this new helper if he knew her worth to him. And thus, after never seeing a woman, exclaimed, well, This is something different. She is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. Woman is a gift from God. And the pattern set forth by Adam applies to all men. We must value woman. And fifth, or fourth rather, a warning to both men and women. There are consequences 
to meddling with God's design. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Those who practice lawless deeds are worthy of death. This includes those who are in support of such debauchery. Romans chapter 1 verses 26 through 32 which reads, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the, excuse me, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have, but have pleasure in them that do them. You see, we have many today that are undergoing surgeries, taking medications to disrupt God's design. Most of the time, these people simply have unease or dissatisfaction with their own gender. This is what is typically referred to as gender dysphoria. While this is indeed a serious matter, confusion does not dictate personhood. You look at modern medicine, we don't treat root cause, we treat symptoms. In fact, often, more often than not, we ignore root cause. If someone feels like a woman, now, okay, we'll give you surgery. Take these pills. Congratulations, you're a woman now. And vice versa. You feel like a man? Here's some surgery. Take some pills. Congratulations, you're a man now. Instead of legitimate, proper treatment for these individuals, they are presented with mutilation as the only option. The root cause is generally legitimate trauma suffered through abuse. We're not trying to undermine that. There are, there are people who indeed suffer from this thing. However, those who are riding the wave of this fad this transgender movement. That's all it is. It's not real. You cannot be a transgender because you can never change your gender. You might feel like the opposite gender, but you are not the opposite gender. And there are so many people who are confused and they're being told that you can be whatever you want to be when you grow up even if it violates God's design for mankind. And this simply will not stand on the day of judgment. As we just read in Romans 1, this type of thinking is worthy of death. Spiritual separation from their creator. Now this message was not based upon hate. 
but that of truth. Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. You see, feelings change. They, however, do not, cannot alter reality. Nor can they ever change one's gender. Woman was designed by God for greatness. Many today are attempting to reduce woman to a mere costume. This costume can then be worn at anyone's whims. One that I can think of is this Dylan Mulvaney. I see that as complete disrespect for what God has made, and that is woman. You have this little scrawny kid dancing around like he's Peter Pan, thinking he's a woman, and people applaud that. People applaud the attack on God's design. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Man does not equal woman. We were created to be different. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be confused. The home is where this sort of teaching needs to occur. Because you put them anywhere else in the world, what do you think they're going to hear? Especially during this month of June. Prideful month. So in honor of this month, I thought it necessary to have such a lesson. Not only did they hijack God's promise to man to never flood the earth, which I would point out is missing one color. It's not even a legitimate hijacking, but they attempted it. They've stolen God's promise. They've stolen a good word, and that is gay. And now they're attempting to steal woman. A man can be a woman. That's the biggest slap in the face to every female who has ever given birth. You mean he can be like me on a genetic level? He can just claim to be a woman and he's accepted? You know how many dollars I'd have if I had a dollar for every gender? I'd have two and I'd have a whole handful, maybe more, of counterfeits. Man and woman are not the same physically, biologically, or mentally. However, man and woman are both the same in value. The gospel shows us this fact. It points to an equal value to God. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 it points to an equal responsibility to obey the gospel of Christ. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It points to an equal need for dedication to faithfulness. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 33, 34, and 35. And it points to an equal resting place to those who are faithful. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, and that is heaven. It is a scientific fact and it is a biblical fact that man is not woman, that woman is not man. And these things can never be so. As again, in honor of Pride Month, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. It is our individual act of obedience to the gospel of Christ that makes our equality a reality. God created man and woman to be physically different, yet they serve complementary roles. Now this morning we have talked about what is, necess what is necessary to be Save from one's sins. If you wish to render obedience to the gospel of Christ the next few moments, or make a public confession of, of fault and repentance, please do so as now together we stand and sing.